we look at the last section of our study of mirrors which is image formation image formation and this is actually focusing on ray tracing ray tracing in order to locate the position of an image formed by a mirror now in order to locate this position of the image that a mirror can form we need to find a point where rays drawn from the tip or any part of an object converge after reflecting from the mirror normally three rays are used three principal rays are used just like what we did with lenses the same we do with mirrors so we start by looking at the concave mirror now we draw the mirror let's suppose this is our mirror this is the concave mirror and this is the principal axis the principal axis here now this is the vertex or optical center as we have seen before this is the optical center or the vertex now this is the non-reflecting side of or surface of the mirror now let's suppose this is our focal point and we label it f and let's suppose that this is our center of curvature c now and let's suppose that we have an object at this position and we represent the object by an arrow just like what we did in lenses right our first ray which helps us to locate the position of the image we draw it from the tip of the arrow going towards the mirror surface and this ray strikes the mirror surface and the ray has to be parallel to the principal axis so when it is reflected it passes through the focal point in this direction as shown here now we call it a ray one then the second ray we can draw comes from the tip of the arrow and passes through the focal point and strikes the mirror right then when it strikes the mirror surface it is reflected parallel to the principal axis right so this is our second ray it comes from the tip of the arrow passes through the focal point strikes the mirror and it's reflected parallel to the principal axis now a third one is when you draw it from the same point the top of the r same point but passes through the center of curvature then when it strikes when it strikes the mirror surface it's reflected back along the same path right you can find that the three rays one two and the third one all of them converge at a point here and this is where the position of the image lies this is the image we can call it i and this is our object o right check from here 
to the vertex. This is our focal length. This is our focal length of the mirror. Now, sorry, from, from F, not from the image, but from F. From F. Now, from the image to the vertex is the image distance di. While from the object to the vertex is d naught, which is the object distance. And from the center of curvature to the vertex, this is the radius of curvature of the mirror. Right. So basically this is how we use ray tracing in order to locate the position of the image given the object at a specific distance from the lane, from the mirror. So that's how we use ray tracing for a concave mirror. Now let's look at how we do so for a convex mirror. So we look at a convex mirror. Now in this case a convex mirror remember it is shaped in this manner and let's say this is our principal axis principal axis right and this is our vertex the big part of the mirror the big part of the mirror is the non-reflective surface well the f this is the front part of the mirror which is the reflective surface right let's assume that this is the focal point of the mirror and let's assume that this is the center of curvature of this mirror right so now let's assume that we have our object at this position again perpendicular to the principal axis now remember the same procedure which we did with concave mirror is what we do here. So any ray from the tip of the arrow parallel to the principal axis would always be reflected in such a way that it would appear as it comes from the focal point. Always. Now, this we call it our ray one. Now, the second ray, the second ray, which travels again from the tip of the arrow, but along the path that passes through, it travels along the path that is along the line that passes through the focal point like that this is the ray it comes from the tip of or the head of the arrow now it travels along a line that passes through the focal point now when this ray strikes the mirror it is a reflected parallel it is a reflected parallel to the principal axis. So when you extend the reflected ray backwards, then you find that it coincides or omits the extended ray of reflected ray one at a point here. Now this at this point we have our image where these two extensions meet the two extensions meet we have our image there now you can use also another ray 
that comes from the top of the arrow and it travels along the line that joins the center of curvature the line that joins the center of curvature now such a ray when it comes and strikes the mirror surface it is reflected backwards along the same path so when you extend the reflected ray backwards you find that it also crosses at the same point where the other two rays have been crossing so we have one we have two we have three these are the principal rays that are used to locate the position of the image in this convex mirror so the same story you find that the distance from the vertex to the focal point is the focal length the distance from the center of curvature to the vertex you call it the radius of curvature and the distance from the object to the vertex is object distance and the Im distance of the image to the vertex we call it image distance like that so this is how we use the three key rays or principal rays that are necessary for us to locate the position of the image right which is okay now let's look now at in summary in summary how the these images are formed and uh, how they appear so we are just going to summarize by looking at the effect of the effect of a change in position of object on image properties on image properties for a concave mirror right we just want to see to talk a little bit or discuss a little bit about what happens when you change the position of the object with uh, regard to the properties of the image formed what happens so we not the following we not the following for a concave mirror when the object is far from the mirror when the object is far from the mirror the image of the object is smaller than the object than the object when the object is far from the mirror the image of the object is smaller than the object right in other words if we were to compare h not which is the height of the object it will be greater than the height of the image right now the second point is that the image is inverted the image is inverted 
the image is real. But if let's say if the object is at infinity if the object is at infinity infinity then the image is formed at the focal plane is formed at the focal plane right when the object is at focal plane in other words if the object is at focal plane in other words at the focal point the image is at infinity right if the object if the object is inside the focal point inside the focal point the image is in other words h i is greater than h naught erect and virtual erect and virtual right in other words this describes the properties of the image formed by a concave mirror check we start by looking at a situation where the object is far away from the mirror we get an image that is smaller in size compared to the to the object the same image will be inverted but it will be real if you were to put the object at infinity then the image would be at the focal plane if the object was to be put at the focal plane the image forms at infinity if the object would be inside the focal point then the image will be not become virtual now and magnified larger than the object itself right so this is in the case of a concave mirror so let's look at convex mirror convex mirror what happens now in terms of a convex mirror a virtual image a virtual image is always is always formed is always formed behind the mirror behind the mirror at a negative image distance at a negative image distance now you find that at a later stage when we use sign convention uh, you'll see that the sign convention for the concave mirror and the sign convention for the convex mirror is the same we use the same sign convention and the equation is still valid for both 
that is the mirror equation is still valid for both mirrors. Right. Now, this is always what happens in terms of a convex mirror. A virtual image is always formed behind the mirror. Right. And when it comes to F, the focal length of the focal length of a mirror, it is always half the radii. Half the radii. Right. This is what we need to know about the convex mirror. We will discuss more of this in class when we are looking at problems that regards the convex mirror and the concave mirror. Okay, now the last part we am interested in is to quickly look at the mirror equation itself. The mirror equation. The mirror equation. Let's quickly look at this. The mirror equation. Now, our objective on this part, our objective would be to use the mirror equation and sign convention to use the mirror equation and sign convention to determine to determine the position of the image the position of the image magnification and the size of the image. Produced by any object at a specified distance from a spherical mirror. A spherical mirror. Right. So, our main objective is to use the mirror equation. Right. And also to use the sign convention to determine position of the image we form and also to determine the magnification and the size of the image which is produced by the object placed at a specific position from the mirror. Right. This time it's not ray tracing. This time is by calculation. So the equation we use is called the mirror equation. And the equation itself says 1 over d naught plus 1 over di is equals to 1 over f. This d naught is object distance. And di is image distance. from the mirror here also from the mirror and this is the focal length focal length of the mirror right remember we said previously that the focal length is half the radius of curvature. So this formula 
and this formula are essential for the determination of the image position. You can combine you can combine the two expressions to get one single equation 1 over d naught plus 1 over di equals to 2 over r. Right, that's one way of combining them. Remember, this 2 over r stands for 1 over f, which is 1 over f. Right, so you can combine and you have that as a single equation involving the distances of the radii or the distances and the focal length. Right. Now for a plane mirror, for a plane mirror, if we were to use the equation for a, a plane mirror, that is applying this equation, we apply this equation to a plane mirror, then you would find that F which is R over 2 will give us infinity, will be infinity, which implies that D naught would be equals to DI, right, it will be equals to DI, right. Now, normally we put a negative there because when we look at the sign convention, we'll see how the negative comes in. Right, so the last aspect we look at then is the magnification. The magnification here would be the ratio of the object height to the object, the image height. This ratio is constant and it can be also expressed as object distance to image distance. So that gives us a constant ratio. Now this ratio, uh, in terms of magnification, we write M is equals to HI over H naught equals minus DI over D naught and this M is magnification, magnification of the image, of the image. Right, so we can use the object size and the image size to find the magnification or we can use the image distance from the mirror and the object distance from the mirror, we divide them and this ratio also gives us the magnification. Now the negative sign is by convention, is by convention as we shall see when we talk about the sign convention. Now the magnification, magnification M, it tells us, tells us how many times, how many times an image, how many times an image is bigger than the object or smaller than the object, than the object. Simply compares how big the image is to the object. How many times the image could be bigger or could be smaller than the object. Right. So, in calculations, in calculations, in calculations, 
in calculations. H naught is always taken as positive. Is always taken as positive. H I could be positive, could be positive if image is upright. It could be negative if image is inverted. Right. M, the magnification, is taken as positive if image is upright and negative if image is inverted. Right. Okay. This equation, in other words, 1 over d naught plus 1 over di equals 1 over f is valid for both mirrors. It's valid for both mirrors. That's what we need to know. Now, let's look at the sign convention. When we are using the mirror equation, we need to have a sign convention. Now, in this study, we are going to use the following sign convention. Right, remember, sign convention, a sign convention, a sign convention is chosen. It is chosen so as to give, so as to give correct locations and orientations and orientations of images, of images as predicted, as predicted by ray diagrams is predicted by ray diagrams right in other words that's why we need the sign convention now there are different sign conventions that are used but all are meant to confirm uh, the position and the orientation of the image obtained by ray tracing. Right, so in this study we are going to use the following sign convention. This is going to be our sign convention. Number one, let's say sign convention for this study. Right, let's say one the object distance d naught is measured is measured from the object to the lens now number 2 point number 2 the image distance is measured is measured from image to the lens to the lens right now point number three object distance d naught and the di and the image distances are positive if they are measured 
if they are measured in the same general direction in the same general direction is that in which light goes otherwise otherwise negative right so d not and di will can always be positive provided they are being measured in the same direction as the light goes otherwise they will be negative right the next point the next point is that if d i is negative it implies a virtual image it implies a virtual image if d i is positive it implies real image real image now fifth point is that if focal length is or let's say not let's not say if the focal length is always positive for a concave mirror and the focal length is always negative for a convex mirror now then point number 6 the radius of curvature r radius of curvature is always positive for concave mirror and negative for convex mirror right that's the radius of curvature is always positive for a concave mirror and a negative for a convex mirror now and the last point is that which is very important to draw always a single headed arrow to represent to represent each distance if any arrow if any arrow points backwards points backwards then against the direction of light against the direction of light the corresponding the corresponding distance is negative right so when you are drawing measuring your distances you have to use a single headed arrow so if it points in the same direction as the 
direction in which light is traveling, then that distance is positive. If the arrow points in the opposite direction to the direction of travel of light, then that distance is negative. Right. So, in general, this is what we wanted to discuss in this lecture 4 on mirrors. So, go through the video, the three sections completely, and try and understand what we have discussed in this video. Come to class well prepared for further discussions, but you need this basic knowledge first in order to engage yourself productively in class. Have a good time.